I already have an iPad Pro and a Wacom Cintiq, so surely I have no need to be buying this, right? So I love buying drawing tablets and my iPad Pro is, you know, one of the best drawing tablets I've bought to date and I've got comparison videos talking about which is better or, you know, which is better for you, uh, an iPad Pro or a Wacom Cintiq. If you're planning to be drawing digitally, perhaps you're drawing straight into a computer or just using an app. So why on earth would I go ahead and buy something like this? Well. I found that I need to edit things on the computer a lot and that this device, this Wacom Cintiq HD 13 is just too big and even if you've got the, uh, the Cintiq Companion which is more or less the same size but doesn't need all the cables it's still pretty huge but look at this so what's really nice about this is that you can edit straight onto the screen every you see your entire desktop on this screen and then you can use the pen straight on and what you you, know, you you will actually draw where they put the pen down so obviously that has plenty of benefits but the problem is that it's such a large device that I don't have any more space on my desk anymore and you have to plug this in every single time you want to use it so what is this cable this is a you know a single ended cable that goes into the Cintiq itself but on the other side you need to plug into a USB port on your computer a power plug which you know so there's a separate cable that goes from here to the AC power and HDMI so if you've got a laptop that doesn't have HDMI you'll need an adapter fortunately Unfortunately, most of my computers have HDMI, but some of them don't. And the thing is, I was usually doing this to edit thumbnails for YouTube. Sometimes I do very simple graphics editing where I don't actually need to be drawing straight onto the screen, which is one of the greatest things about the iPad, is you can just draw straight onto the screen just like you would on a piece of paper. There's no drawing on the device and looking somewhere else, which is what you would do with one of these, sorry, one of these tablets. So the, I, so the Intuos Photo, which is the spec version that I've got, is a little bit more expensive than the cheapest model. This is about $100, $110, and what you get with it is some cheap photography software plus a pen that has touch support. The cheapest version of this tablet doesn't have touch support. You will actually uh, be only able to draw with the pen and you won't be able to do those gestures with your hand for zooming and moving around the page and that sort of thing. So that's actually the reason I bought this. I just don't have space on my desk for, I mean with the iPad I do have space on my desk for it, but it's usually sitting up or I'm doing something else with it, like I'm watching videos with it. And this guy, it just takes too much effort to set it up even though, when, especially when all I'm doing is very, very simple tasks. So, that is the reason why I bought this. I may as well, since I'm at it, go ahead and unbox it for you now. In Joss Photo, there are four versions of this tablet. The Draw, Art, Photo, and Comic. The main differences with all the tablets is the software that comes with it, and apart from the first model, all of them have touch support. It's only the Draw edition that does not have touch support. So I'm trying to find out where I'm actually going to open this box. Apparently there's a little sticky tape label here on the bottom. Now some people will also be wondering, why don't you just use AstroPad on your iPad in one? <laughs> I haven't actually got AstroPad, so one day I will buy AstroPad and maybe that would be better than doing this. But I just love the idea of just leaving this on my desk and never moving it because Fortunately, it's such a small device that I can just leave it next to the computer. Whereas the iPad, I'll be taking this out and about when I go to cafes all the time. It won't always be on my desk, so I can't re rely on it to be there. But there are so many times when you need to draw a quick outline or you need to mask something on a photo so you can cut out a face and stick it on it. Basically, it's for YouTube thumbnails, especially that I'm buying this. So this is the box that it comes in. It comes in this nice Intuos Wacom box. It's not an Intuos Pro, this is just the basic, this is like the new version of the bamboo. Opens up like so and you have the tablet inside. So something that does worry me about this tablet is that you get this pen but there's no eraser on it. I've found, I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to need the eraser function but then again uh, there are buttons on the tablet so you can just hold a function button down and it, this, you know, the tip will become an eraser. Ooh. It has a very, very spring-loaded tip. I'm not used to that because I've been using my iPad Pro a lot, but this is the pen. 
So I'll just give you a quick look at the Wacom pen that comes with it. It is spring-loaded at the tip, unlike the Apple Pencil. That is something that is different if you're not used to the iPad Pro or the Wacom pens. That is something that is different. And there is no eraser on the back. There are two buttons on here which are useful because you could hold down the button and turn the tip into an eraser or even use it to open up the radial menu that uh, Wacom likes to use. This is the device itself. Unfortunately, it's not wireless. I don't know why Wacom doesn't make their tablets wireless as standard. Perhaps because most computers don't have fast enough Bluetooth, you have to buy a special Bluetooth accessory. This is the packaging it comes in. I'm just going to pull the plastic off it. It's a bit like unboxing a, an iPad actually. So this is the device itself. This is the photo edition and so it only comes in black. But if you buy the art edition or the co comic edition, I, I'm not sure which ones, certain versions also come in blue. But because this is the photography edition in Japan, it only comes in black. It has four function buttons here on the top, so I think you can assign them to anything you want, maybe to switch tools, maybe between the eraser and the pen or the G pen or the ruler, whatever it is you need to use. There is a button here which I think will actually switch off the touch feature. So anyway, that's all I really wanted to show you. It's just a quick vlog to say that um, I, I just found that I wasn't satisfied with only having the iPad Pro or the Cintiq because they're just larger devices and they're not really set up for just using my computer. Whereas with this device, I can use this as a tablet I can have the hover cursor, which is, which is, okay, it's really, really useful when you're editing things, especially photography. There are other reasons why you might want to get a tablet like this instead of going for an iPad Pro. For example, you can draw without your hand covering the screen. And I thought that's not really that big a deal, surely. But I've been talking to animators recently, and when they do animation, they said when you're drawing like one eye on the left and one eye on the right, and you need them to be identical, because you're not drawing a manga, you're drawing an animation, and from frame to frame it needs to be identical. Sometimes you can draw the left eye perfectly fine, but then if you've drawn the right eye first, your hand will actually be covering part of the eye while you're trying to draw the other one. So your hand can get in the way. There are reasons why getting a Cintiq is not always the perfect choice. Whereas having something like you know, a separate standard desktop tablet like this is actually really useful. So that's really all I really wanted to show you. Just a quick vlog about this Wacom tablet. Why did I spend $100 on something when I've already got all of this other really expensive material? And it's because it's just convenient and there are reasons why you might want to go for a separate tablet. I hope that helped you if you were also thinking about getting a tablet, whether you were trying to make a decision whether to spend a lot of money on a Cintiq or whether to just go for one of these simple Wacom photo tablets. As far as I know, it has about a thousand 24 levels of sensitivity, or I don't think it's 2000. I think 2000 is reserved for the Pro Pen, which is in the Cintiq. I use this on my Cintiq, but I'll be using this on the Intuos. I don't think they're compatible. If they are compatible, maybe I'll tweet about it and let you know in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.